Hey everybody, I'm Lindsay Adler and this is a photo deconstruction. Now in a photo deconstruction, I take one of my photographs and I show you all the pieces that work together to make the final result, from the lighting to the post-processing to the concept. Now the image I have for you today is all about color, super saturated color. Uh, when you look at my portfolio, what I tend to do is I either shoot high contrast black and white or super colorful and hardly anything in between. And I've always been passionate about using color and gels. Gels are really intriguing to me. And it's I've often found it a little bit complicated uh, sometimes to get multiple colored gels on the subjects and make it look classy and, and make it really work together well. So that was what I was experimenting with in this photograph. And I ended up loving the way that the color uh, interplayed on her face. So I want to show you what it took to make this photograph. So let's first take a look behind the scenes. Now this photo was lit with three strobes, all of them pro photo strobes, some of them D1, some of them D2s. And there are two lights on my subject's face and one light on the background. So let's take a look at this. So the first light, the main light, I have a 10 degree grid and a red gel. So I was thinking what I would do for the color palette was to play with a warm and a cool tone. So something red in something blue. So my main light, I put on a red gel. Now, the reason I have a grid on, what a grid does is it focuses the light, but it also makes it so less light reaches the background. So I was trying to, to limit the spread of light. That's what I use the grid for, just to, to keep it in zones, the background in one zone, the main light in one zone, the, the fill light in another zone. Uh, so that is the main light on her face. All right, now, Come over to the left hand side and we have a fill light, another 10 degree grid, but this time there's a blue gel and a teal gel layered up. So I've got my warm and my cool. Now uh, how gels work is they show up most in shadow areas and I teach about this a lot. So what you can actually see, you can see it a little bit in the behind the scenes photo, but a lot in the final shot is the main light is that red light hitting her face, but wherever that creates shadows on her jawline or cast by the fingers on her hand, Wherever those shadows are created, the blue gel sees an opportunity of a dry area, of an area in shadow, and it soaks up in those shadows. So you see red as the main, and then wherever there's shadows, blue will become apparent. So that's the first and second light. And now the third light is the background light. Um, it's on a floor stand, so it's just behind her. That gives me a nice even light across the background. And I used another red gel. So I've got these three lights, but before we switch back over to the photo, let's take a look at the gear. I was shooting with a Canon 5D Mark IV. Uh, it's my go-to beauty camera, and I was using a 70 to 200, but I was shooting at 200 millimeters, so I went for a nice, tight shot. And I was shooting at f11, so everything's nice and in focus. I didn't think shooting at a wider aperture would contribute anything to the shot, especially since it's pretty colorful and graphic, so narrow depth of field didn't really fit the concept to me. So let's go back over and look at this shot, and you can see what I was talking about. So this is the final image. You can see that the shadow areas created by the main light, that's where the blue gel really soaks up. But one of the tricks, one of the things I think most people don't realize about working with gels is that a lot of times you do need to give it a nudge in post-processing. Uh, a lot of times the colors aren't as saturated or they aren't as bright when you're actually looking in uh, the back of the camera or at your raw file. Uh, sometimes it's changing the color profile. So right now, right nowadays you can change and choose multiple color profiles. Some will be more saturated, some bring out more depth in the image. Uh, but then also playing with hue saturation luminance and going into each and every color and changing the hue or brightening it up. So although this is what the final image looked like, and I, I love the emotion, I love the color, uh, it looked a little bit different to start off with. So this is the straight out of camera image. The photo, is, the core is there for sure. You can see the blues, you can see the reds and the pinks, but they're, they're quite desaturated and they're missing some of the luster, some of the sparkle to it. So this is the raw file, no processing whatsoever, but I'm shooting tethered to my computer. So with a raw processor, uh, Capture One, Adobe Camera Raw, Lightroom, one of those, what I did is I went in and I said, okay, well, that blue, for example, let me go in and brighten up that blue, saturate it a little bit more. Let me pop the highlights, increase the clarity. Overall, just make the colors have a little bit more richness to them. So this is straight out of camera. And this is once I used a raw processor. So before I've ever gone in Photoshop and it makes a massive difference. Look at the richness in those blues and the highlights. Like there's, it, it just has a lot more pop. 
So you can see on the right-hand side of the frame, the red, the left-hand side of the frame, the blue, and then where the red and blue overlap a little bit, you see that it's like a purplish magenta. So it all kind of makes sense. So that was in my raw processor. And then looking at it, there's not a lot that I needed to change, honestly, to uh, fix it fix it up in Photoshop, get rid of some blemishes, smooth things out a little bit, and, and maybe tweak some final colors. So this is the raw process file, and this is what I did in Photoshop. So I smoothed out the skin. I got rid of any blemishes, anything I found distracting. I thought the freckles on the nose weren't adding to this particular photograph. Sometimes I emphasize freckles, but not in this one. Uh, and then I actually thought because the mix of the red and blue made magenta, I thought it was actually more powerful if I made the background look magenta as well. So I actually just grabbed that red and I shifted it. So in uh, hue saturation luminance or in this, uh, in this instance, because it was Photoshop, in hue saturation, I took the red, shifted it to have a little bit more magenta pink in it. So here's straight out of camera, raw process, and in Photoshop. So this photo is all about color and not being afraid of color, not being afraid of hard lights, using, using gels, using super saturated color, but also knowing that when you look at the photo raw, it's the start. You can pull so much more saturation and richness out of the photo. So I use that as, as my base, and then I perfect it and bring out the most I possibly can using a raw processor. I'm Lindsay Adler, and I hope you've enjoyed this photo deconstruction. If you'd like to see more, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel.